Hello everybody. So, for our first theory module, we are doing first period math applications. Um, and seeing as this is the first theory module, I wanted to go over how the modules are sort of structured and how they work. So, of course, right off the bat, table of contents, just laying out what's inside. As a first page, it's going to break down the objectives. So each of these objectives um, is a section of the module, if you want to put it that way. So first objective is going to recognize basic arithmetic symbols or math symbols. Each objective has um, an informative section. So this is arithmetic symbols. And then it's going to have exercises or questions. So pretty straightforward process. Um, read the information, answer the questions, um, and then in the back of the module has the answers. I strongly recommend doing all of the questions for each objective and then going to the back and checking your answers. If you get something wrong, Go back to the information and you should be able to find out where you went wrong. Um, if it doesn't make sense to you, you can always email me, you can call my office, and we can try to sort it out. The modules and what's in the modules is ultimately what you're going to be tested on. Everything in the modules is a potential test exam question or a potential question on your TQ, which you'll be writing at the very end. So let's get into first period math applications. Um, start with a, it's, it's mostly a review from uh, high school mathematics and all other math really. So our basic symbols, of course, we're gonna have addition, which is a, a plus sign. If a question is looking for the sum, it's gonna be an addition question. Okay, the sum of these two numbers, it's saying add them together. Okay, subtraction is of course the minus sign, um, also known as a difference or um, or some other term that I can't think of at the moment. Um, multiplication is the uh, X symbol, or you may see me just doing a dot. The dot also signifies multiplication. Division is either like this line, two dots up top. Um, it could be crossed like this with a term on the top and a term on the bottom, or it could be like this. I'm using X and Y right here. Uh, the X and the Y are called variables. They are not an actual value. It's a representation of a value. Um, we'll talk more on, on those in a little bit. So with each fraction, for example, one over two is a fraction, we have our numerator, which is at the top, and our denominator, which is on the bottom. If a number such as uh, let's just take the number six. If you have a number like the number six that does not have a new denominator, pardon me, drawn in, you can assume it is over one. So any number that does not have a denominator drawn in is over one. Okay, that's important to remember. So if we're doing addition, for example, so let's take one over two plus one over 
2. We do not add denominators, but we do add numerators. So 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2, since we're not adding the bottom numbers, we're going to add the top numbers, is going to equal 2 over 2. Now, that's very simple when the denominators are the same, but if uh, some of you remember from school, often they will give you different denominators. So let's do 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4. So what we need is we need common denominators. We need the bottom numbers of the fraction to be the same. Okay, so it's going to be a lot easier to times this 2 by 2 to make it 4. And how we do that is quite simple. We, uh, oh sorry, I should also say that uh, multiplication can also be done by just a number in brackets. So what we're going to do is we're going to times this 1 half by 2 over 2. Okay, and when we're adding fractions, we have fractions like this, what we do to the top, we do to the bottom. Okay, so since we're going to times the denominator by 2, we're going to times the numerator by 2, just for this term. This here is called a term. Okay, so we have one term times another term. These two terms happen to be fractions. So, now we have 2 over 2 plus 1, oh, pardon me, over 4, pardon me, plus 1 over 4. Now we have common denominators. We can add our numerators to give us 3 over 4. Um, same situation for subtraction. In subtraction, um, we just want a common denominator. Of course, we're going to be minusing the numbers instead of adding the numbers. So, let's say, for example, just an example question. 1 over 3 minus 2 over 9. So, just like addition, we need a common denominator. 3 and 9 are not common. They are not the same. So we're going to, we know that, or at least we should all know that 3 times 3 is equal to 9. So I'm going to show this in a different way. There's lots of ways to show uh, the different basic arithmetic symbols, whatever you're comfortable with, work with that. So now we have 3 times 1 over 3 times 3, because we know that'll give us a common denominator. So then we're going to have 3 over 9 minus 2 over 9. And that's going to equal 1 over 9. Subtraction, much like addition. We do not subtract the denominators, we subtract the numerators, okay? Uh, multiplication is going to be a bit simpler. For multiplication of fractions, that is, we just multiply straight across. So, let's go back to another simple one. 1 over 2. Let me use a different multiplication symbol. That dot just means multiply time 1 over 2 times 1 over 2. So all we want to do for multiplying fractions is just straight across. 1 times 1, 2 times 2. Right, so 1 times 1 equals 1, 2 times 2 equals 4. That's all you need to do for multiplication. Division is going to be quite a bit simpler to multiplication, or pardon me, quite a bit more similar to multiplication. <clears throat> uh, 
for division, we're going to cross multiply. I don't know if uh, hopefully you all remember that from school, if not. Um, so let's do, let's just keep it nice and simple. One over two divided by one over two. Okay, I apologize if my penmanship is not great. I'm uh, an electrician, not not uh, not a good artist. Anyway, so one over two divided by one over two. There's two ways to look at to uh, represent this, if you will. You can quite simply just say I'm going numerator times denominator for both terms. Okay, or we can represent it like this. You can take this equation and you can flip one of the fractions. So, 1 over 2 times 2 over 1. Okay, those are the same things. So, that's dealing with fractions. Um, another thing your module touches on that's really important uh, just to stay organized throughout all the math you're going to do in your schools is, uh, if everyone remembers this very fun acronym, bed mass. Which is also known as order of operations. And when you have a larger uh, equation with many things going on, um, this is just the order you do them in. It has always helped me to stay organized when doing math because the larger the equation gets the messier it can become and if you're disorganized it's hard to find your way and if you make a mistake and you're organized you can go back and find your mistake quite easily so b is of course for brackets and this is all in your module as well e is going to be exponents Right, so brackets, also called a parentheses. I don't know why people say that, but brackets. Uh, an exponent would be, let's say, this is just a whole number or a representation of one, right? This is just our variable. So if you had x to the power of 2, this 2 is going to be our exponent. Okay? So the 2 is the exponent here. d is for division. Let's just draw a division symbol. M is for multiplication, A is for addition, S is for subtraction. Okay, it's important to stick to this order when you have an equation with uh, all of these or some of them because otherwise you will end up with an incorrect answer. The toughest thing at least for me in this first module, is transposing. And I'm just going to go through um, transposing an equation with you all. And I'm going to use one that's actually going to come up in the next module. So it's, uh, it's the equation for Ohm's Law. And it's just using variables, right? So these are just letters that represent values. And what the point of transposing is, is we want to alter this equation so that we can find a different variable. For example, if we have the value for i and the value for e, but we want to know what r is, we need to transpose or change this equation in order to find out what r is. Because right now, if I just put the value for i in, you know, changed out that variable for a number, <clears throat> and did the same thing for e, that doesn't tell me what r is. So, what we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other. The important part of transposing is to keep the equation in an equivalent or an equivocal value. Okay, so i equals e over r. 
either side of this of this equation of this equal sign needs to stay the same mathematically okay so transposing is going to give us a different looking equation but either side of the equal sign still has to be the same or equal value as it is right now I should say so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply one side by R because we want to get this R by itself the whole point of transposing is to get variables isolated so that you can solve with your known values. We're going to times this other side, the i by r. Okay, and so what's that? what that is going to give us instead is r times i on the other side of the equation we're I'm going to skip over it a bit because I think you all are going to understand this well enough, but I'm skipping over it because e times r over r, well, the r divided by r is essentially 1. So e times 1 is nothing. So all we do is we cross out each r because r divided by r is uh, essentially nothing. And so now we have r times i equals e. We still want the r by itself. Excuse me. So we still want the r by itself. So what we do now is we divide both sides by i, which would give us the equation of r equals e over i. Now, hypothetically, if we had a value for e and i, then we simply put those values in, divide e by i, and we would get the value for r. So that's your first module of uh, math applications. I hope this was um, helpful for everybody. Uh, go through your module, do the objective questions. They're good questions, they're helpful. And if, as usual, if you need any help, please email me or call my office.